Hey everyone, let's have a quick chat about The Circle by Dave Eggers. Now, I went into this book thinking it would be about an internet company, something like Google, hooking its hands or claws into everything. And it is partly about that, but that's not all. I don't know. If you want to go into this book mostly blind like I did, then you should better leave. Other than that, I'm going to talk more about the main character and the things that I experienced while reading. Because if you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen me rage tweeting the whole time about this stupid main character. And if like me, you expected to DNF this book because it's so exhausting to read, you would probably be surprised that by the end, I thought it was brilliant. This book is written in an interesting way that aggravates you, that makes you engage with the book a lot. And I think that's a good thing. It also makes very clear the themes and ideas Agus wants to provide the reader with. And the way he does that is he shows everything through our main character, who is 24-year-old May, who is very insecure. And the book starts with her starting at The Circle, this huge company which is so famous for being innovative and making everything easier. It combined a lot of the social media and social or internet activities under one account that's using your true name. So everyone who's using Circle has their true identity on it and it goes into ideas of the effects that it had on the internet and everything else. That's the company. But we start with May going there, seeing her being grateful to be working at this great company. And for the first 30 pages, I was so annoyed by her and her superficiality. Every person she meets is described in a superficial way. I can't even remember all the things she said, how the people looked, what they were wearing, and every little detail that was just superficial. It was so annoying to read. And I remember for the first 70 or 100 pages, the back of my mind kept saying, this is a cult, this is a cult, this is a cult. Why doesn't she see it? Everything that's happening in the company, how she's introduced to the company, how she's introduced to the work at the company, what the company expects of her and everything outside of the normal work, everything you see basically screams cult. And I thought this book was going into a cult direction, how this company is a big cult that everybody joins or how she fights to get out of that. But it wasn't. Like I said, I didn't really know where the story wanted to go. Until the end, I was pretty much wrong about everything that I expected. This book is written in three parts. We have book one, which is basically May going to the company, starting there, establishing her position and getting to know people and the company more and all the dealings she has with the company. Book two is a huge part where she's more integrated into the company and becomes a more valued member of the company. Book three is very, very short and it's the outcome. And that surprised me the most. So. Throughout reading this, you get everything through May's perspective. So you see and hear everything that she sees and hears, but you interpret it differently. You see how she ignores all the alarm bells that are ringing in the back of your mind. You see how she experiences some things physically and has doubts in her actions, but she's constantly believing what the company owners and everybody at the company tells her, even though she's not completely aligning. One of her main excuses to not fulfill whatever they want is always, I was too busy. She's making excuses, but nevertheless, she's never questioning anything. And that is so aggravating while you're reading it because you can't understand how this woman keeps being manipulated. In the second book, you see more of her and how she actually is lacking a lot of self-confidence, how she needs to be seen by others, her desire to be important and valued. And the way her position in the company changes, I don't want to give away too much of the content, but the way that her position and her perception by others change inside the company and outside of the company and the basic circle environment, the world is fascinating because 
She feels like she has power, while I constantly thought she's still being manipulated. And it's very fascinating that Dave Eggers really shows us all the things that should make her run away, should make her question everything she does, but she doesn't. And we see how she changes her behavior, how she changes certain things because of the company and the things that are happening. And it is also fascinating that there is a voice of reason. Her parents and her ex-boyfriend frequently tell her what is wrong and what with the ongoings with the company and the goals of the company and the new things the company introduces, where the problems are, and she just can't see it. So even if the reader hasn't picked up on all the wrongness before, Dave Eggers really puts it there for us to see, to understand why there are problems with this company and the things they want, the ideas they have, and why this is not a good idea. And especially in book two, we see how our main character keeps ignoring that and keeps twisting her own reality and understanding of things into a way that she discovers that she really, really wants to know everything. The more you get to know her, the more you notice that she's not only insecure and very self-conscious, but she's also very anxious about not knowing everything. If she can't find out information about anyone or find them on the internet, get their location, see them, really reach them immediately, she feels anxious. She has this really, really deep desire to know everything. And in this book, they frequently put it as a right to know everything. Like privacy is shown as something that is selfish and that sharing and being open and transparent is something that people have a right to and that it's nothing wrong with that. Even if it's a private, intimate scene or event that is caught on camera, nothing gets deleted because everything gets to be shared and everybody has a right to know. And even though we see our main character struggle with this when it is about her personal things. She still wants to have all that information about others. And she never realizes that that is wrong, no matter how many people tell her. And it's fascinating to see this. It's, like I said, very exhausting to read, but as a narrative device to give us this young woman who really wants to do better. She's trying to do good and she's convinced that everything she implements and helps implement and start is for the better of society. And she ignores every voice of reason. And it's fascinating to see all of that. There are so many clear cut images and metaphors that are not even hidden. So I don't know, I felt reading, I was constantly exhausted, especially right now with the coronavirus and the pandemic and all the people that are still fighting against it and everybody being locked down and the uncertainty of everything. I can understand that you want to know what's going on. I could understand her in that part, but it was still everything she was willing to give up, all the freedom and the privacy. It was fascinating to read. And I do recommend this book despite it making you angry and wanting to throw it at the wall and really, really, really hit the main character over the head to talk some sense into her. But I think it's very well written. It's very well done. And it's worth pushing through the first hundred or so pages where you think like, this is the stupidest person in the world. I can't continue this. It lasts till the end, till the last page. And I don't know. Let me know in comments what you thought, if you have read The Circle. There are many more things that I didn't even touch upon. I really find this a very, very interesting book that you can discuss and talk about. So let's talk about it in comments. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.